Welcome to the Black Excellence and Abundance channel. Michael Jordan. The Willis Towers, formerly the Sears Towers. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Wrigley Field. What about Scarface himself, Al Capone? What do they all have in common? Chicago. The first permanent settler in Chicago was a black man named John Baptiste Point du Sable. Little else is known of his early life prior to the 1770s. Du Sable was educated in France and then in the early 770s sailed to New Orleans. From there, he made his way up to the Mississippi River to Peoria, Illinois, where he married a Potawatomi woman named Catherine in a tribal ceremony. The couple had two children, Jean Baptiste Point Du Sable Jr. and Susanna. Du Sable settled along the northern bank of the Chicago River near Lake Michigan in 1779, where he built the first house in what is now known as Chicago. He also developed a prosperous trading post and a farm. He created the foundation of the Chicago. His cabin is often depicted as a modest structure, but written descriptions of the property suggest that DuSable may have lived more than a modest life. According to original manuscripts documenting the sale of DuSable's property, the cabin was spacious, boasting a roomy salon with five rooms off each corner. The property featured a large stone fireplace, bake and smoke houses stables and hunts for employees, along with a fenced garden and orchard. Household furnishings included paintings, mirrors, and walnut furniture. At his trading post, DuSable served Native Americans, British, and French explorers. He spoke Spanish, French, English, and several Native American dialects, which served him well as an entrepreneur and mediator, as many so-called Africans spoke different languages prior to slavery. Until recently, there were no streets named in his honor. Could you believe that? It took the lobbying of people like noted historian and author Lerone Bennett Jr., as well as several black legislators who pushed for this change. Now Lakeshore Drive is known as John Baptiste Pont de Sabo Lakeshore Drive. A mouthful. We like to reiterate that he is the first non-native settler in the place known as Chicago today. We would also like to say that he did not discover Chicago because it is impossible to discover a place that is already inhabited by hundreds of thousands of people. But that's just plain fantasy. He was Chicago's first administrator, the first city entrepreneur, and the first real estate developer. Julius Jones, Corrated at the Chicago Museum believes that one of the most important contributions that he made was learning to peacefully coexist with the indigenous tribes marrying into the Toto Watami nation. Jones also said De Salba was a successful tradesman. He further said De Salba's biggest asset was his neutrality with the indigenous people, the American and the British before, during and after the American Revolutionary War. Another great accomplishment of this visionary was the location of his settlement, which was on the north bank of the Chicago River. Now that same location is now where the Apple Store of Michigan Avenue currently resides. This man was such a visionary. And we say this because settlers before him had come and they looked it over and they said, no, this is not the place to settle or to live. But for him, it was the perfect location, strategically located, good for economics, good for his settlement and such. It is also said that he was the first non-indigenous person to see the economic potential of the place now known as Chicago years before its development. De Salva was described as a handsome Negro, well-educated, and he settled in what the natives called S. Chicago, which later became Chicago. The farm 
encompassed more than 800 acres of land. The Salvos settlement in this area was prior to the land becoming a part of the U.S. territory. The French held territory along the Mississippi River, such as Louisiana, with its main city post in New Orleans. The French also held the St. Louis area. By the 1760s, De Salbo was living in the Louisiana Territory, then under French rule. He moved from New Orleans to St. Louis, both still within French colonial rule. He was an, an explorer and entrepreneur, and De Salbo was a well-known and highly respected businessman in the Northwest Territory of the United States. As stated, he spoke fluent French, Spanish, English, and several Native American languages. He traded heavily with neighboring tribes and established a main supply station for westward white men who were moving from the English colonies. In 1778, he was temporarily jailed by the British armed forces on charges of being a French spy. These allegations were never substantiated. De Salva was known as a man of fine taste. He built his home on the north bank of the North Michigan Avenue of what is now known as the Chicago River, near the site of today's Wrigley Building. As a black man who was multilingual, free, and self-employed, De Salva may have been considered suspicious by the British and the French, as well as those Europeans who are identifying themselves as Americans at that time. Whatever the reason, there is a Native American saying, that may capture the part and the magnitude of his historical legacy. The first white man to settle in Chicago was a black man. We know that De Salvo and his family stayed in Chicago for 20 years and ultimately left. We know that he traded for the time he was there. We also know that his land ended up in the possession of John Kinsey, a white man who would go on to be far more revered as the founder of Chicago for the next two centuries. However, this simply is not true. Today, Lakeshore Drive is now named John Baptiste Pont de Salvo Lakeshore Drive. And Chicago is a complicated and beautiful city founded by this black man. So from now on, when you think of Chicago, Think about John Baptiste Pont de Sabo, the black man who founded it. He is yet another hidden gem in our community. He accomplished this then. Just imagine what we can accomplish now. Nothing is impossible to us once we put our mind to it. The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, where black history is every day. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And never forget, thou art rich.